Hey, hey viewer, how many tickles does it take to tickle a telos? Ten tickles, get it? Tentacles? Eh, sorry about that. The joke was courtesy of Tess. Anyway, welcome to my in-depth telos guide. I'll be covering the requirements to fight him, the gear, inventory, and familiars you'll need, and the mechanics of the fight. As always, you can skip around to the part of the video that you need by clicking the buttons at the top of the screen. For those of you that are still with me, let's get started. In order to fight Telos, you'll first need to obtain the Ancient Sigil, which is formed by the Sigil pieces dropped by each of the generals in the heart of Gilinor. Because you need to fight each of the generals, 80 attack, magic, range, and prayer serve as requirements for fighting Telos. Once you form the sigil, use it on the door of the large tree at the center of the heart. This will allow you to enter Talos' arena. Those are the bare minimum requirements for fighting Talos, but before you go rushing off to get your own little lock test monster, there are a few more requirements you'll need to meet. You're going to want level 90 in your combat style of choice for tier 90 weaponry. Talos has very high defense, and anything below tier 90 accuracy will miss quite a lot. You'll also want 95 prayer for turmoil and its variants. 96 Summoning for a Pack Yak, and at least 96 Herb Lore for Overloads, though 98 Herb Lore for Supreme Overloads is preferable. Along with these stats, you'll want to unlock Dreadnips at the Dominion Tower. They're a great source of extra damage that will add up over time, and they can stun Telos. While you're there, you should also unlock the Goliath, Swift, or Spellcaster gloves, depending on which combat style you plan to use. These gloves have a 5% chance to do 25% more damage, bind your target, and lower its combat stats by 7 every time you use an Auto Attack or Basic Ability. If you're using magic, you should unlock the special attack of the God Staves by casting Divine Storm 100 times in the Mage Arena. The Gothic Staff has access to Clouds of Gothics, which reduces your target's defense by 4 at the cost of 25% Adrenaline. You should also complete the Hard or Elite Sears Village tasks in order to unlock the Enhanced or Elite Enhanced Excalibur. Their healing effects are extremely valuable against Telos. If you're doing higher end rages, you'll want to pick up regular or Octo Tank gear from the Liberation of Mass Cab Raid. Telos can be fought using any combat style, however I'll only cover magic and melee due to range having poor defense against Telos' main form of attack and being a weaker choice overall. You can use it if you want, but I recommend it only for very low in ranges. Go ahead and click on your style of choice to see what you should use at Telos, or sit back and relax while I start us off with magic. Magic should be your go-to style for high in range kills. It can be used effectively at low in ranges as well, however it shines once you reach 100% in range or higher due to its AoE potential. You should use a Noxious Staff or Seismic Wand in Singularity. The Wand in Singularity makes shield switching much easier, though the Noxious Staff provides an accuracy buff through Sonic Wave. Your helm, body, and legs should consist of tectonic or vertus robes for lower enrages, or a primeval mask at higher enrages. As Telos's enrage increases, you'll eventually transition into full primeval gear. Your necklace should be an amulet of souls at higher enrages, or a reaper necklace at lower enrages. An arcane blood necklace, arcane stream necklace, or dragon rider amulet should be used if you can't afford an amulet of souls or reaper necklace. Your ring should be an Asylum Surgeon's Ring. If you're new to the fight and can't protect all of your degradable gear if you die, wear a Ring of Death. Once you get to higher end rages, switching to a Ring of Death for the same reason is also a good option. If you're good with switching rings, you can bring both. If you have neither of these rings, a 6 8 circuit will work. Your cape should be a Takar, Kul, Mej, or God Cape unless you have a completion escape. You can also use a Max Cape if you plan on teleporting directly to Telos from the Max Guild. Your boots should be Virtus Boots or Boots of Subjugation at lower enrages, and Prime Mobile Boots at higher enrages. Your gloves at lower enrages should be Spellcaster Gloves, or if you can afford the upkeep, a Death Touch Bracelet. If you don't have access to the former and can't afford the latter, Virtus Gloves are also a great option for low enrages. At higher in rages, you'll want to use primeval gloves. If you're going to use auras, dark magic and runic accuracy should be your top choices. Dark magic provides a decent amount of extra damage that's good at lower in rages, while runic accuracy provides a much needed accuracy boost that's great at all in rages. Your pocket slot should have a scrimshaw of magic for its accuracy boost or a scrimshaw of the elements for its damage boost, but only if you have a portent of life in your inventory or if you're experienced at fighting Telos. If you think that you might die, use a sign of life in case of death or a sign of item protection to protect an extra item upon death. Melee is good for lower enrages. It can be used effectively even at higher enrages, however after 100% enrage, you should switch to magic for easier kills. It's still doable, but it's much easier with magic, and after a certain point, you'll want to switch to magic for phase 5, or it'll be extremely difficult. You should use a Noxious Scythe or Dual Dragors. Dragors make shield switching much easier and provide slightly more damage in a scythe against single targets. If doing low enrage kills, Dragors are a good option. However, if you want to do kills at 100% enrage or higher, you'll need a scythe for its AoE power. Your helm, body, and legs should consist of malevolent or Tova armor for low enrages, or Terralith armor at higher enrages, though it's unlikely you'll get to a point where you need full tank armor if you're using melee. 
Your necklace should be an amulet of souls at higher end ranges or a reaper necklace at lower end ranges. A brother's blood necklace or brother's knockout necklace should be used if you can't afford the amulet of souls or reaper necklace. Your ring should be an asylum surgeon's ring. If you're newer to the fight and can't protect all of your degradable gear if you die, wear a ring of death. Once you get to higher end ranges, switching to a ring of death for the same reason is also a good option. If you're good with switching rings, you can bring both. If you have neither of these rings, a 6th aid circuit will work. Your cape should be a Takar Call Cat unless you have a completion escape. You can also use a fire cape or a max cape if you plan on teleporting directly to Telos from the max guild. Your boots should be Torba or Bandos boots at lower end ranges, or Terralith boots if you're doing higher end ranges. Your gloves at lower end ranges should be Goliath gloves, or if you can afford the upkeep, a death touch bracelet. If you don't have access to the former, or can't afford the latter, Torva gloves will work. If you're doing higher end ranges, you should switch to Terralith gloves. If you want to use an aura, Dark Magic provides a decent amount of extra damage that's good at lower end ranges, while a Brawler's aura provides a much needed accuracy boost that's great at all end ranges. Your pocket slot should have a Scrimshaw of attack for its accuracy boost, or a Scrimshaw of vampirism to sustain your health, but only if you have a portent of life in your inventory, or if you're experienced at fighting Telos. If you know you might die, use a sign of life in case of death, or a sign of item protection to protect an extra item upon death. Your inventory should have a Supreme Overload, a Super Prayer Renewal, a Weapon Poison Plus Plus, three Super Restore Flasks, and six or more Ceredomen Brew Flasks. You'll also want to bring an Enhanced or Elite Enhanced Excalibur, a Ring of Vigor, a Replenishment Potion, the best Defender or Shield that you can use, and Runes for your Combat Spell of Choice. Fill the rest of your inventory slots with any combination of your Food of Choice, a Teleport Option, a Weapon Switch, Runes for Debuffs, are a Portent of Life if you have 99 Divination. At higher in Rages, the Defender's ability to mitigate damage is extremely valuable. As you become more experienced with fighting Telos, you can replace your food with brews. Phases 1, 2, and 4 can be tanked using brews only, due to taking incremental damage as opposed to high burst damage, provided you manage to evade the abilities Telos uses. Phase 3 is where you'll use the most food if you get hit by Telos' special attacks. If you do the phase efficiently though, you shouldn't be hit by too many of the special attacks, if any at all. There are three good familiars to bring with you to Telos, though which one you bring depends on how comfortable you are with the fight. At lower in rages, you can use a Steel Titan or a Nihil. The Steel Titan requires 99 summoning to use and will increase your damage output significantly due to its strong attacks and powerful special that lets it hit four times in one attack. It can't carry food or heal you, so it shouldn't be used at higher in ranges. A Nihil requires 87 summoning and, like the Steel Titan, will greatly improve your damage output. Using a Nihil will boost your accuracy by 5% and apply an accuracy and defense debuff to its target, unless Unless you're using a smoke nihil, which only boosts accuracy. They can't carry food or heal you, so once you get to higher enrages, they'll be less useful. Once Telos' is enrage is too high for you to do with a normal damage familiar, you'll need to switch to a pack yak, and store your food of choice, Ceredomen brews, are both inside of it. Ideally, you'll want to bring the highest healing food you can afford and super Ceredomen brews. If you're poor like me, and not after the highest enrage possible, sharks or rocktails and regular Ceredomen brews will work. The ratio is up to you. Don't be afraid to experiment and figure out what suits your needs. Eventually, you should transition to using mostly brews with 10 to 12 pieces of food, since most of the phases do incremental damage that can be recovered with Ceredomen brews. You'll need to be able to avoid Talos' abilities to survive on only brews, so take your time and learn the fight. As you become more experienced with the fight, you can start bringing more Ceredomen brews and less food. There are three good ways of getting to Telos. The first is to use a heart teleport tablet, which will teleport you directly into the heart of Gilenor. Walk up to the giant tree and through the door, and you'll be in Telos' arena. The second is to use a desert amulet to or higher to teleport to Narda. There's a bank there that's useful for restocking, as well as a shrine that will restore your prayer points and boost your maximum HP. Once in Narda, run southwest to the entrance of the Heart of Gilador. Once you're inside, walk up to the giant tree and through the door to get to Telos' arena. The third and final way is to teleport directly to Telos using the PVM portal in the Max Guild. Unfortunately, I don't have access to the Max Guild, so I can't show you this method. Telos has a wide variety of mechanics, so I'll be dividing this part of the guide into sections. I'll cover his abilities, each phase, and how Enrage affects the fight overall. Feel free to use the buttons at the right side of your screen to skip ahead. If you'd rather go through it in order, let's get started with abilities. Telos has 6 abilities that he'll use throughout your fight with him, which you can navigate through by clicking the arrows near the top of your screen. In order of appearance, these are Tentacle Grip, Gilor Uppercut, Stomp, Magical Onslaught, Anima Ball, and Anima Virus. Telos will put his arm to the ground and say, your anima will return to the source, then grab you with tentacles. If you're using magic or range, you'll remain in your current location, but if you're using melee, he'll drag you into melee range. This ability applies a damage over time effect and drains 10% of your adrenaline per tick while healing Telos and filling his special bar. This attack lasts for about 14 seconds or until you break free by damaging Telos. This ability is only used during phases 1 and 2. 
He'll also say, Gilinor, give me strength, and crouch down. A few seconds later, he'll charge to your location if you're far away from him and attack with an uppercut that deals a large amount of typeless damage that increases within rage. If you're in melee distance, he'll use the uppercut attack after a few seconds without charging. To counter this, wait 3 seconds after he says, Gilinor, give me strength, then you surge or escape. If you time it correctly, Talos will end up at your previous location and you'll take no damage as he uses the uppercut. If you mistime it, you'll take damage and Talos will end up at your current location. This ability can also be avoided by equipping a shield and using resonance or barricade. You can also reduce the damage by using debility or reflect. This ability is used in phases 1 through 4. Talos will say hold cell invader right before smashing his arm into the ground. This ability has two parts. First, as he's holding his right arm back, it will take a melee hit. Then right after he slammed his arm into the ground, it'll deal a large amount of melee damage and stun you. A few seconds later, he'll jump to your location, dealing massive typeless damage and disabling your protection prayers or deflect curses for 5 seconds upon landing. If Talos is far away from you when he uses this ability, you'll be stunned and take melee damage, even though the animation takes place far away from you. The counter to this ability comes in two parts. First, use Anticipation a few moments before Talos uses this ability. This will prevent the initial stun and cause him to move you out of the way before he lands, negating the massive typeless damage that you would take if you were standing in the landing zone. Equip your shield as Talos begins using Stomp. Immediately after the first melee attack goes through, use Resonance to negate the damage and heal from the second melee attack. Using Resonance too soon or too late will result in you taking a large amount of melee damage. If Anticipation doesn't move you out of the way after he jumps, you'll have to move away manually. If Anticipation is on cooldown, you can still equip a shield and use Resonance to heal from the second melee attack, however, it'll stun you as it hits. You'll need to use Freedom immediately after being hit in order to dodge the jump in time, though the timing to do so is a bit tricky. This ability is used in phases 1 through 4. Talos will stand in place and launch increasingly powerful magic attacks at you. Instead of having a special attack during this phase, the special bar determines how long Talos can maintain this ability. His magic attacks are initially yellow, but after you've been hit 5 times, it'll turn red. Once his special bar runs out, Talos will stop attacking you with magic. In order to drain Talos' special bar, you'll need to block the black anima beam. You can also reduce the damage from this attack with debilitate or reflect or negate it altogether with devotion or barricade, though those are temporary solutions. This ability is used only during phase 2. Talos will hunch over for a moment and say, let the anima consume you, before shooting a ball of anima at you from his chest. This attack will do a large amount of typeless damage and cause a damage over time effect that also drains your overload timer by 15 seconds per tick. To clear this effect, stand by any of the fonts. You can reduce the damage of the initial attack by using debilitate or reflect or negate it with resonance. This ability is only used during phase 4. At 50% enraged, Talos will occasionally infect you with an anima virus on phases 2, 3, and 5. On phase 2, he'll infect you with a black virus. On phase 3, he'll infect you with a red virus. During phase 5, Talos will infect you with the red and black viruses as well as a green virus. Each virus will inflict damage over time that increases with enrage and can be cleansed by standing in a beam of the same color. This ability is only used during phases 2, 3, and 5. Talos has 5 phases in total, which gives us quite a bit to go over. Phases 1 through 4 will end once you've damaged Talos by 25% of his total health, finally killing him on phase 4. If you kill Talos at 100% or higher in rage, he'll revive with a new HP bar and phase 5 will begin. You can skip to the phase of your choice by clicking the buttons at the top of your screen. With that brief overview of Talos' phases out of the way, let's talk about each one in a little bit more detail. During phase 1, Talos will primarily use melee attacks and will sometimes use a magic attack if you're too far out of melee range. The abilities he uses during this phase are Tentacle Grip, Gilinor Uppercut, and Stomp. When the fight starts, Talos will use 7 attacks, followed by a Tentacle Grip. After this, he'll begin his attack pattern. First he'll hit you 3 times, then use Gilinor Uppercut, after which he'll hit you 3 more times, and then use Stomp. Once he lands, Talos will hit you twice more, then use Tentacle Grip again. After you break free, he'll repeat this cycle of attacks indefinitely until the phase is over. The beam of anima that appears during this phase is green. This beam gives you 10% adrenaline per game tick while also slightly draining your prayer as long as you stand in it. It also fills Talos a special bar, causing him to use his so much power special attack if it fills up completely. This attack replaces the next ability in the cycle. After so much power, he'll attack you twice, then use the ability he skipped. After this, his attack pattern returns to normal. This special attack does a massive amount of typeless damage, however it can be negated with resonance and have its damage reduced with debilitate and reflect. During phase 2, Talos will primarily use melee attacks and will sometimes use a magic attack if you're too far out of melee range. Talos will use the same abilities as he did during phase 1, 
with the addition of a magic version of Onslaught and, if you're over 50% in rage, a black anima virus. The way to all starts the phase is based on the last ability he used during phase 1, meaning that he could start phase 2 in multiple ways. If the last ability used during phase 1 was Stomp, at the start of phase 2, Talos will perform two normal attacks, then a tentacle grip. If phase 1 ended with a tentacle grip, phase 2 begins with two attacks, then a magical onslaught. If phase 1 ends with a Gilmore uppercut, phase 2 will begin with three attacks, followed by a stomp. And if phase 1 ends on Talos' special attack, so much power, he'll start phase 2 based on the ability that he used before it. Normal attacks from phase 1 carry over into phase 2 when determining when Talos will use his first ability. After his first ability, Talos will use a set pattern of attacks throughout the entire phase. Once you know what ability Talos will use at the start, you can predict what he'll do next based off of its place in the attack cycle. There are two attack cycles, the one used below 50% in rage and the one used over 50% in rage. These attack cycles have one key difference, which has been color-coded on your screen. Attacks in sight are used only below 50% in rage, and attacks in red are used only at 50% in rage or higher. Both attack patterns are extremely similar, with the main difference being that at 50% in rage, Talos begins using the Anima Virus ability, which places itself between Stomp and Gilderoy Uppercut, and overwrites the usual attack chain with its own. Three attacks, followed by a Black Anima Virus, and then two more attacks. Talos' attack patterns are as follows. Below 50%, he'll use a stomp, followed by two attacks, then a Gilderoy uppercut. After this, he'll use three attacks and then tentacle grip. Once you break free, he'll do three more attacks, then use a magical onslaught. After his special bar is fully depleted, he'll hit you with three more attacks and then begin the cycle all over again. When Talos is at 50% or more in rage, he'll use a stomp, followed by three attacks, then as the third attack connects, you'll be infected with a black anima virus. Two more attacks will follow this, after which he'll use Gilderoy uppercut. Once the uppercut is used, Talos will do three more attacks and then follow up with a tentacle grip. Upon breaking free, you'll be hit by three more attacks than a magical onslaught. After Talos' special bar fully depletes, he'll hit you with three more attacks and the cycle will begin again. A black beam of anima appears during this phase. This beam reduces the damage that you deal and the damage that you take while standing in it, and cleanses the black anima virus. It also fills up Talos' special bar, if he stands in it. Talos doesn't have a special attack during this phase. Instead, the special bar is used to determine how long his magic onslaught will last. Phase 3 is simultaneously the easiest and the most difficult phase. During this phase, Talos will use only short-range magic attacks, which require him to be within two squares of you. The abilities Talos uses during this phase are Gilderoy Uppercut, Stomp, and after 50% Enrage, the Red Anima Virus. The way Talos starts this phase depends on the last ability he used during Phase 2, meaning this phase can start in multiple ways. If Phase 2 ends with a Magic Onslaught, Phase 3 will begin with 11 attacks, followed by a Gilderoy Uppercut if Talos has under 50% Enrage, or 8 attacks, followed by a Red Anima Virus if over 50% in rage. If Phase 2 ends with any other ability, Talos will do 7 attacks before using his first ability on Phase 3. If Phase 2 ended with a Stomp, a Black Anima Virus, or Gilinor Uppercut, his first ability will be another Gilinor Uppercut. If Phase 2 ended with Tentacle Grip, Talos' first ability during Phase 3 will be Stomp. Phase 3's cycle of attacks changes significantly after 50% in rage, so I'll cover both attack patterns. The attack chains and abilities that are unique to below 50% and above 50% in rage kills are color-coded Cyan and Red respectively. Talos' attack patterns are as follows. Below 50%, he'll use Stomp, followed by 6 attacks, then a Gilinor Uppercut. After this, he'll use 3 attacks, then begin the cycle all over again, repeating this pattern of attacks until the phase is over. At 50% or more in rage, he'll use Stomp, followed by 3 attacks. Once the third attack hits, you'll be immediately infected by a red anima virus. After this, you'll be hit by 2 more attacks, then a Gilinor Uppercut. Following this, Talos will use 3 more attacks, then repeat the cycle until the phase is over. A beam of red anima appears throughout this phase. This beam will increase the damage you deal and the damage you take. The special bar now has two red sections at the left and right, and a green line that starts out in the middle. The red beam pushes the green line towards the right if Talos comes into contact with it. Three golems will also spawn throughout the phase that push the green line to the right. The damage you do to Talos will push the line to the left. The red areas of the special bar increase in size as Talos becomes more enraged. If the green line goes into the red area on the right, you'll be hit by red anima shockwaves, which are Talos' special attack for phase 3. Each shockwave deals a large amount of typeless damage and he'll continue using them as long as the green line is in the red area to the right of his special bar. If the green line goes into the red area on the left, you'll be drained of 10% adrenaline per game tick, similar to the effect of tentacle grip. Your biggest priority during this phase is to stand in the beam so Talos can't use his anima shockwave. If that isn't enough on its own, you can kill the golems to prevent the green line from moving to the right. They have low HP and can be one-shot, but be aware that they will respond throughout the wave. During Phase 4, Talos will primarily use melee attacks, and will sometimes use a magic attack if you're too far out of melee range. The abilities he uses are Stomp, Gilinor Uppercut, and Anima Ball. There is no beam during this phase, but after 1000% enrage, rocks will occasionally fall from above you that deal a large amount of typeless damage. 
Phase 4 will always start out with 3 attacks followed by an ability. Which ability Tela starts with depends on what he used last on Phase 3. If the last ability used was Stomp, Phase 4 begins with Anima Ball. If an Anima Virus was used last, Phase 4 starts with Stomp. And if Gilder Uppercut was the last ability used during Phase 3, Talos will use it again as his first ability during Phase 4. After the first ability of the phase, Talos will attack in the same pattern until the phase ends, allowing you to predict what he'll do and how to counter it. Talos' attack pattern is as follows. He'll use Stomp, followed by 2 attacks, then a Gilder Uppercut. After this, he'll use 3 attacks, then an Anima Ball. He'll finish up with 3 more attacks, then repeat the cycle until the phase ends. There are no beams of Anima to fill Talos' special bar during this phase. Instead, it fills up while he charges his Anima Bomb. This attack will instantly kill you if it lands, and occurs when Talos is reduced to 75%, 50%, and 25% of the HP he begins phase 4 with. He'll spawn a pure, volcanic, and corrupt golem, and an Anima Font will become active. The golems that spawn each have a different effect. The green golem will drain your overload timer, red golems will stun you, and black golems will reduce your armor. The first font to become active is the pure font, followed by the volcanic font, and finally the corrupted font. Talos will put his right arm to the ground and begin draining anima from the font. You will need to stand by the active font and absorb anima from it, however doing so will drain over 10% of your HP every game tick until the font is fully depleted. You can negate the damage from the anima font by using barricade, and should do so at higher enrages due to increased HP drain. Once you've absorbed enough anima from the font, you will automatically create a shield around it that protects you from the anima bomb. When it's ready to be fired, Talos will shout, you dare defy me, then attack you with it. The immortality ability will save you if you're below 1000% enrage, otherwise you'll still be killed. If you survive the anima bomb, it will put all of your damage mitigation abilities on a 6 second cooldown. Talos' special bar fills around 75% each time he uses his Anima Bomb, unless you aren't close to the font. If you wait too long to get close to an active font, it can fill up completely. When his special bar is full, Talos will use the So Much Power special attack from Phase 1 after he's used his instant kill move. When So Much Power is used, it replaces the ability that would have been used next without overriding the attack chain. For example, if Talos had used Stomp, then attacked you once before starting his instant kill move, he will be hit one time after it fires, followed by a so much power. It will cause a massive amount of typeless damage, after which Talos will hit you twice, then use the ability that he skipped. Once this ability is used, Talos will continue attacking you in his usual pattern. To avoid damage from this attack, you should stun Talos as much as possible so your defensive abilities can come off of cooldown. Then use Resonance to negate the attack completely, or debilitate or reflect to reduce its damage. Ideally, you should use Resonance, but when doing so, be careful. If a golem is alive, it can attack you and consume your Resonance before so much power hits, causing you to take a large amount of damage. Try to time it so that Talos begins charging his Anima Bomb immediately after a special attack, to give you more time for your cooldowns to reset. During Phase 5, Talos will attack with only magic. The only ability he will use during this phase is the Anima Virus. At the start of the phase, Talos will spawn 6 pure, volcanic, or corrupt golems. The type of golem that he spawns is random. As with phase 4, the green golems drain your overload timer, red golems stun you, and black golems reduce your armor. Once the golems spawn, you'll need to call at least 4 of them near their respective font to activate it. Talos' special bar will gradually fill up throughout this phase. Once it's completely full, he'll begin charging an Anima Bomb that will instantly kill you, much like on phase 4. As he's preparing to fire his Anima Bomb, you'll need to run to the active font and use it, which will prevent Talos from firing the bomb and stun him for a few moments. Once Talos recovers, he'll summon another random set of golems after a few moments and you'll repeat the process over again. Black and red Anima Viruses will be present on this phase, as well as a green virus. The virus that infects you corresponds to the active font cycle of Phase 4, where the color of the virus is one step ahead of the color of the golem that spawns. If green golems spawn, a red virus infects you. If red golems spawn, a black virus infects you. And if black golems spawn, a green virus infects you. You. you can clear the viruses by walking into an anima beam of the same color. You'll be hit by falling rocks during this phase. They deal high typeless damage and aren't tied to an attack chain. Instead, this will happen every 10 to 15 seconds. First, small rocks that deal no damage will fall to indicate where the larger rocks that deal high typeless damage in a 3 by 3 area will fall. Then, after a few seconds, the larger rocks will fall. This attack can prove fatal if you get stunned by the red golems. Talos gains additional abilities, increased damage, and his mechanics slightly change as his enrage increases. At 50% enrage, Talos starts infecting you with anima viruses. He also gains the ability to occasionally restore his stats if they've been drained. At 100% enrage, Talos gets a new phase, and at 1000% enrage, immortality will no longer work against his instant kill moves. Alongside that, two sets of rocks will fall on you during phase 5 instead of just one, and rocks will fall on you during phase 4 as well. Though it doesn't actually affect the fight, killing Talos at 500% enrage unlocks the Warden title. Talos' enrage also impacts the drops that you get. His drop tables have three tiers, bronze, silver, and gold. Your chance to obtain rare items, such as orbs of anima, or dormant god weapons increase with each tier. Talos' normal drops also increase in quantity with higher kill streaks. 
All right, that will do it for the guide. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helps. Get out there and kill a bunch of Talosuses. Talosai. Talai? Whatever, just go kill Talos. Take care, guys.